Hey everyone, I'm Angie with The Painted Feather and I'm live on the Dixie Belle paint page. Happy Monday. Hopefully you can see everything okay. It looks like it's a little dark back here. Um, anyway, I am an elite retailer of Dixie Belle paint and I'm located in Northern California, about an hour north of San Francisco. And you can find Dixie Belle paint at two locations near me at Whistle Stop Antiques in Santa Rosa, California, and also at Ray's Trading Company in Sebastopol, California. And as a matter of fact, I got this piece that we're gonna work on tonight out at Ray's Trading Company. Lots of amazing salvage items there and lots of really fun, rusty, crusty things there too. Hey, Gina from Georgia. So, hi, Dixie Bell. So as you arrive, let us know where in the world you're at, if you're working on anything cool. And um, we're gonna have a really good tutorial tonight. I, I'm excited about this one because I love metal and I love natural patina. Hi, Nancy. And um, hi, Teresa. And I get to use my favorite color tonight, which is Mermaid Tail. I'm gonna use it a little bit different though. So I'll tell you about that. Um, Sharon Wade, beautifully blemished in Portage, why is it Wisconsin? Um, so let me tell you what we're gonna do tonight. So as you can see, these drawers and this metal file cabinet is super rusty. So, but I love natural patina and I don't know if you do too, but we're not gonna completely get rid of all this rust, but we're gonna play it up and we're gonna make it look um, a little more sophisticated and we're gonna treat it. And what we're gonna end up with is something that looks like this. Isn't that a pretty color? Mermaid tail is amazing. So what I've done is I have custom mixed some gilding wax that is, um, not exactly this color. I'll tell you what I did to mix it up to get this color. And then, oh, thank you guys for the hearts. You like this. Um, and I've treated this with big mama's butter and I've also used a little bit of copper gilding wax on here too. So we're just gonna go through doing this piece and at the end, Gina likes the patina and the, the rusty crusty stuff too. Hey, Jen, um, we're gonna just, completely transform this piece. So let me see if you can see how it's looking. So see over here, this is where we're headed. This is where we were, but let me talk to you about gilding waxes first. Hello from Brisbane, Australia, ex Sacramento, California gal. Hello, okay. So last week I was doing a tutorial and somebody was asking the difference between gilding wax and um, the gemstone mousse and I did not um, tell everybody, other people did for me, that the gilding wax is oil-based and the um, metallic mousse is water-based. And the oil-based is gonna act a little bit different than the water-based, and the water-based products, um, you just have to be, I mean, you apply them a little bit differently. The gilding waxes can go right over metal. Let's see how this is. I'm gonna show you the different colors of gilding wax. and. The um, gemstone mousse can go right over metal as well too, but I like to play up details with gilding wax, whereas gemstone mousse I might put over like a whole surface of something and really um, make something pop. It's super pigmented, whereas the gilding wax is pigmented, but a little more subtle. Hi, Linda, how's it going? So, hi, Sandra. So this, is, this color right here, I'm gonna tell you the colors it comes in. This is the color called zinc. Um, this, uh -oh, I think that's gold, I think that's gold. Okay, this is, oh, actually, no, that's gold. That's the gold right there. Um, oh, this is bronze. This is a bronze gilding wax. Comes in so many beautiful colors. Um, I must have done, okay, and there's silver. So this zinc is a little more, more blue than the silver. We have black, which you can see on here with this rusty metal. And then copper, and I love copper with turquoise. So we're gonna use the copper and we're gonna use um, actually, um, let's see, we have some chameleon waxes. This, we're gonna use cactus, but I'm mixing it 
with the mermaid tail. So I'm gonna show you that I've done that. You've been waiting for tonight's video. Awesome, Linda. So the best way to get Dixie Belle paint, somebody just asked me, is um, you can click on that link in the description of this video and get right to DixieBellPaint.com and you can search for a local retailer near you, somebody like me that you can ask questions to or um, you can order it right from there. It'll come right to your door. You can contact somebody locally in your area, or like I said, click on that affiliate link, order it. It'll come right to you. Okay. Easy enough. If you have questions to, during tonight's tutorial, you can um, put them right here, drop them in the comments. And if I don't see it, I'll circle back later and answer them for you to the best of my ability. And if I don't answer it, just um, send me a message and say, hey, you forgot to answer my question and I'll get back to you. I'm at the Painted Feather by Angie, okay? So Justin, okay, you got my answer, good. So I try to answer them. So let me show you what I did with the gilding wax. Actually, before that, to prepare this piece, I took a wire brush and I wiped the whole thing off. Um, I just gave it a good scrub, but I don't want to scrub all of the patina off of it. So. I did scrub it, just all the loose stuff, okay? Got all the loose stuff off of it. And then I took some steel wool and I rubbed the steel wool all over to just get all the little bits of um, rust off that were right on the surface. But as you can see, it's still nice and rusty and I like that. So I don't wanna get rid of all of that. So, and then I, I wiped the whole thing down with white lightning cleaner just in my misting spray bottle and just gave it a good little scrub with that, okay? So that's where we've been. And now I'm gonna do the gilding wax first. So I have a little jar here and I mixed up a chameleon wax, which is the um, cactus color. Normally, so the chameleon waxes will act different depending on the color that you put them on. So I have red and black on here, and you can kind of see a difference, especially if you have, hi, Dr. Susie, how are you? Especially if you have like white and a dark color, it's not as noticeable on these colors that are both kind of dark, but the chameleon waxes, which are gilding waxes, come in three colors. It comes in a, um, this is the apricot, this is the cactus, and this is the lilac color. So see those beautiful colors? I just kind of threw that on here. Hi, Chrisanne, how are you? So I really love the cactus color, but it wasn't exactly the color I was going for. So I just was experimenting today and I decided to go ahead and mix a little bit of mermaid tail in with my gilding wax. And you know what? It worked out okay on this project. So um, let me show you again. This is the color. I ended up with and I'm just gonna highlight the little poles and the edges with this um, custom mixed gilding wax and you can add paint to any wax to you know do a custom thing and gilding wax I don't know if you're supposed to do it but I did it and it worked out okay for this project so it's good to just experiment and see if you can get the products to do what you want and sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't but in this case it seems to be working out all right so I'm gonna put the gilding wax on first and then I'm gonna treat this with big mama's butter and we'll talk about yeah my nails I always put turquoise all over my toenails are a little darker um, so we're not going to put the Big Mama's Butter on first because if I did, there's a chance that I could have adhesion issues with my gilding wax. So we're going to put the Big Mama's Butter on after, and I'm just going to kind of go around the areas that I do gilding wax. So like I said, I mixed up a little bit of mermaid tail with my, um, cactus chameleon gilding wax and they come in these little containers like this and these last you forever it's a little container but it lasts a really long time you can apply it with a brush you can apply it with your finger um, in this case since this is so rusty i'm going to go ahead and apply it with my finger i'm going to bring you in closer so you guys can be part of seeing this here let's pull you down okay hopefully you can see this okay and I'm gonna use a combination of copper gilding wax, and I've got a little brush here, and I'm going to use my custom mix color. So, let's go. And if you've never used gilding wax before, 
This is great for hardware, great for like, instead of distressing a piece, um, putting it on a piece, like on the edges, as if you were distressing it. So I'm gonna put it on and then I'm just gonna kind of work it into the metal, okay? If you have sharp edges, you might not wanna do this, but I'm, I like to live a little dangerously, so I've had my tetanus shots, we're okay. <laughs> So let's, I'm just gonna do this kind of a consistent perimeter on, you know, these drawers here, these little poles, because I think that's gonna look really good. All right, let's see. Oh, I see questions, somebody's, who else is obsessed? Yeah, this is good, right? So this is gonna look so cool when it's done. I get excited about pieces like this that are salvage pieces that might just be in a junkyard somewhere and this is going to look really really neat when it's done and it doesn't take a whole lot of effort it just takes a little vision for where you want to go with it so let's do these three drawers and then let's go with a little bit of actually i think i'm just going to motor through getting all of the wax on where I want. So I'm using a combination of a brush and my finger, and I'm not doing a perfect job because natural patina doesn't look, you know, completely symmetrical. So isn't that pretty? So this looks a little darker than this does. I'm just gonna go and put a little bit more over here because I mixed this earlier and then I mixed that, but whatever. And honestly, with that um, chameleon wax, it probably changes a little bit with time. Okay, so look at how that's looking. And see the difference between the treated with Big Mama's Butter and the untreated drawers here? But we'll get to that. So look how fast of a process this is. So let's get this on here. Maybe I'll leave the last two drawers undone just so that you guys can see the difference. I'm just going to work fast and I'm going to leave a little bit of metal showing on these poles. So, anybody working on anything good out there? Okay, let's see if you can see this. The colors, like anything orangey, rusty with blues, like reds and blues are a great complement to each other. So if you're afraid of kind of going in opposite directions with colors, that's a, a pretty good safe concept. You know, the, the reds and the blues or the rust and blues or greens, my favorite color combination. So you could do this I said just any number of ways to get this onto the surface and it is this metal is somewhat porous because it is rusty so it's going on really nicely so what are you guys thinking about that out there the raised trading company where I got this he probably would just want to seal it um, with the Big Mama's Butter because he's kind of a purist with, you know, these types of projects, but everybody's different with that. And I just like to elevate something to a different place and give it a different look, but still keep it, um, I don't know, it's still kind of true to that rusty look. Just make it a little more fun. can see this all right so just doing a consistent look throughout just one part of the piece get this out of the way and this gilding wax I haven't even reloaded my brush and I had quite a bit on there so it goes really really far as you can see I haven't even had to dip back in this is just a little art brush if you're doing a bigger surface, um, the natural bristle bell brush would be really good or 
the La Petite would be good for your gilding waxes. You know, the natural bristle brushes are what I prefer for gilding wax. Oh yeah, I just love that color combination. Okay, so you haven't even had to reload. This might be a quick tutorial. We do have some other stuff to show you guys in case we get through this really fast. All right, how's that looking? Pretty good, right? I'm gonna scoot you back a little bit so you can get a little bit better view. You know what, I will go ahead and do these drawers too because I want you to have the overall, oh, now I'm having to dip back in. I want you to have the complete view of how good this is gonna look when it's all done. in a little a little bit more on here what's your guys favorite way to use gilding wax isn't that nice Susie okay we're gonna do this and then we're gonna make it pop some more with the copper I love copper to enhance kind of that natural rusty color That's really good. All right, one more spot. Now, if you have too much rust on your surface, it can affect the color of like, if I were to just put paint on this, it could just soak through your paint. So you wanna be careful and not just put, you know, paint straight away on rust because sometimes it will stain your paint and just soak right through. So you could use boss first over the whole thing. Now with this wax, the wax is more pigmented and it is a different medium than just the paint. So it's okay. Like it's not gonna just absorb all that rust and then completely take on that color. So that's why I added the gilding wax to the paint because otherwise I was experimenting with just paint and it was just soaking the rust through. And I could have just backtracked and treated it with, with boss, but instead I found an alternative. So, all right, see how cool that's looking. So let's now switch gears and go with our copper gilding wax. So look at this beautiful color, so good. All right. so. With the copper, what I think I'm going to do, I'm gonna go into some different areas, but I'm gonna go across this whole top line here because I think that will look really good. So I'm gonna sort of just outline it with the copper gilding wax. And it's gonna look, and if I get a little bit on the tops of the drawers, I kind of like that, so I'm gonna get it on the tops of the drawers here. And I'm not doing like a super consistent line, just I'll do heavier in some areas and lighter in some areas. I'll put some down on here and maybe occasionally a little on the, on the exterior parts of the drawer here, just enhancing that kind of natural patina. So this is kind of free form. Okay. Let's see how that's looking. I'm gonna pull you in so hopefully you can see, get a good view of what I'm doing here. All right, so let's go across this whole line. This is, this actually is an eyeliner um, brush because it's kind of good for edges. It's a little angled eyeliner brush. You can get it at any dollar store generally, so I'm not gonna break the bank with it. They have a really good craft area at the Dollar Tree, so. 
by lots of brushes there. Okay, so I, I put it on with a brush and then I like to kind of work it into the surface a little bit. So if you see me using my fingers, it's because I want it to like really become part of that metal and um, kind of massaging it into the surface. And the gilding wax dries incredibly fast if you don't put too much on. So, I mean, a few hours later, it's pretty darn dry. It feels dry to touch, honestly, pretty quickly um, if you don't get it too thick. If you get it too thick, you're gonna have to wait a little bit longer, but let me see if you can still see this. See how beautiful that's looking? Okay, I'm gonna go thicker on the edges here. I just decided that. And I already put a little bit of like turquoisey color up there, so I might go back and do that. But I think I wanna kind of ground the edges with more metallic and then maybe, let's go, let's do this whole edge here. You guys see this, let's bring you over. I've got you on wheels here. Hold on, I think I just saw a message. Gilding wax, oil-based, gemstone, Mrs. water base, highly pigmented, yes. Okay, hello from Upper Michigan. I'm seeing if I'm mis mix missing any buddy's questions. How do you clean your brushes um, with using gilding wax? With that, with Susie, I actually usually use a brush for each different color of gilding wax. So sometimes I just, I just wipe them off really well with like a lint-free cloth and I don't worry about it so much, you know. Um, if you do want to clean it, you can get some scrubby soap and maybe a little like Dawn dish soap and um, you could soak them in white lightning cleaner. With the oil, you just need to, you know, scrub them out a little bit. So the scrubby soap is really good. But usually, a lot of times with my brushes with wax, even just the wax brushes, I don't necessarily wash them until they get like super crusty. So see how cool that's looking. So I'm gonna go along the whole bottom now. We'll massage this in here. Okay, let's go along the whole bottom. I've protected my table here so that I can just go across the bottom here with my wax. Now you do have to be careful if you have a lot of rust to not contaminate your gilding wax. So that's why I used um, the steel wool to kind of wipe it off or to kind of scrub off all that residue beforehand. But if you, you know, get a little bit, then you can scoop a, you have, if you have too much rust going on your brush, you can scoop out a little bit of this gilding wax with like a, you know, little tongue depressor and those little popsicle sticks and put it on a paper plate or something and you don't have to worry about it. Okay, so I'm going across this whole bottom and then I'm gonna just step back and look and see where I wanna put more gilding wax. Let me see what time we're at, 6.25. So moving right along little areas in between are good good opportunity but not perfect okay and let's get across here oh that's looking really good i think anyway okay All right, so I'm putting this over Big Mama's Butter right now and it's working out okay. We put that on a few hours ago. All right, so let's take a look-see and see where we wanna add more gilding wax. I'm just gonna go in here and decide where I'm gonna put it. Now see how I put a lot more on this drawer and I'm liking that. Um, let's just, I like tops of, tops and edges, and then just maybe, maybe around this spot. Does 
does not have to be consistent, but I do like to do it in consistent areas of the piece. So if I go like on bottoms of drawers, I might do it on several edges or bottoms, but I don't usually put like spots of it, like random spots. I just, I stick to kind of linear areas. Now there is Big Mama's butter on here, so some areas where I, I didn't wipe it back well enough, it's just gonna kind of blend with the oils in it. So you have to consider that when you're doing this because it, the oil can affect the gilding wax. So I'm just trying to put it on pretty lightly so that when I go to put the Big Mama's butter on, that it's not wiping it all off. So that's a consideration. You know, I'm, I'm probably using these in a way that it might not be intended, but I like to try to push the envelope of what products will do. So, you know, worst case scenario, you can just change, change directions and use a different product, but okay. Just do a little bit more and then I want to show you how amazing the Big Mama's Butter makes this work. Just really going around these edges. Okay, I want to hit this edge a little bit better now. Even though it has Big Mama's Butter on it, it's still is kind of letting me work it in. It's actually a softer look once the oil's on there. Oh yeah, okay, that's good. All right, a little bit more here. So it's very kind of free form, so however you want to do it. All right, what are we thinking about this? Let's see how that's looking now. I think that's fun. Okay, last thing I want to do before I start um, treating it with the Big Mama's Butter is I want to go and add just a little bit more of this color wax into a couple spots just to kind of tie it together. So I'm going to go on this edge here. And let's see a few little areas to add some of that really beautiful kind of turquoisey color. There we go. If you get too much of it, um, you can use like the spray wax to help take it off or if you get a lint-free cloth pretty close, like straight away, you can get it off pretty quickly. Okay. Or a little steel wool. Rub that back a little bit. Okay, let's do the Big Mama's Butter. How's it going out there? Okay, I've been just staring at my piece for a little while. Anybody have any questions? Let's see, I'm seeing if I missed any questions here. Can you seal over? So Big Mama's Butter can be used as a sealer. And so, thank you guys for the hearts. Um, I love the Rusty with the turquoise too. Um, so it has hemp seed oil in it, which can seal. It has carnauba wax in it, which can seal. It has, um, put more blue. You want more blue on there? We can put more blue on there. We could do more blue around the edges. All right, let's do a little bit more blue. Um, so you can use Big Mama's Butter as a sealer and I'm going to show you in a minute here how much better it makes the rust not come off on your hands once you have it on there. So we're going to do that in a second. Somebody wants to see more blue, so hold on, let's do a little bit more blue. Okay. Um, where do I want to put blue? Let's do a little bit more blue down here on the edge. Okay, 
Let's put on my finger. All right, we'll get a little bit more blue on this piece. Let's try that. And maybe a little bit more here. Actually, I'll, I'll do, I'll just kind of add to the perimeter maybe through here. I usually do a lot with my just my fingers so I'm defaulting to my normal thing right now. Getting comfortable. Okay. And you can use it like on the surface. Um, I have another brush here. Let me see. Oh that looks good. All right, let me bring you guys in a little closer here. So I'm gonna show you how you could use gilding wax as kind of a paint almost. So because this has so much texture and goodness on it, just throw it on there and just kind of work it in. Now it'll be interesting when I put the Big Mama's Butter on here, what happens, we'll see. Hopefully it goes down into there so much that, that it's okay. This is just a, a natural bristle brush here too. So just working it onto the surface. I'm gonna put a little bit more on various spots here. Okay. All right, that's looking good. Oh yeah, the combination of the copper with the blue is so beautiful. So this I'm, I'm kind of just um, putting it more as a, a fainter application right now. Kind of giving it a little bit of a blue hue to the front. A little more rusty blue. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if it'll show up as much with the Big Mama's Butter, but we'll see. Okay, a little more here. All right, what do we think about that? Yeah, this is good. So Chris Ann likes it, Shy C likes it. Okay, can you gator hide? You don't really wanna gator hide over the big mama's but uh, it's, it's an application that kind of stands on its own. Um, it does have oil in it, so unless you remove it, you don't really seal over it. So you you can hemp seed oil instead if you want. Um, and the hemp seed oil does dry matte and, um, you know, a little bit harder, but this does have some hemp seed. The, the Big Mama's does have some hemp seed oil in it. So, okay, now I'm going crazy with the blue. But I like it, it looks so good. Okay. All right, let's get to getting with the um, Big Mama's Butter. So I'm gonna put it on with a brush. Okay, so let's see. See how that's looking now? Pretty good. Okay, hi, Cynthia. Okay, so let's, let's, let me show you. I'm gonna bring you in actually. I keep moving you forward and back. I'm gonna bring you in a little closer so you can see the magic of the Big Mama's Butter, okay? So everything out of the way here. I have lint-free cloths that I'm going to get off the excess with as well. And like I said, hemp seed oil, carnauba wax, um, 
coconut oil. Um, I'm probably forgetting something else. It, this is the Orange Grove scent, and oh my gosh, it's amazing. If you haven't tried it, it's amazing. Um, so Cindy, I custom mixed my mermaid tail with the cactus gilding wax. So I made I made a custom gilding wax with the chameleon wax. So it's mermaid tail along with chameleon cactus gilding wax. So you, I just had a little fun with it. Okay, I'm gonna show you the top first because this is amazing. What did you use the um, orange Big Mama's Butter last night, Debbie? Hi, Debbie. Um, so I already treated this part right here. And okay, let me show you something first. So the part I treated, obviously this is super rusty. I'm gonna show you something. If I go and I wipe the area here, okay, so you can see rust on here. And now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna wipe the area that I treated with Big Mama's Butter. Look at that, like kind of a little tiny bit, but not really, that might've been on there before. It, it really does put kind of a protective coat on here. And I don't know if it will stop it from rusting more, but I think it probably will. So, okay, let's show you how amazing. It's gonna enhance and deepen the rusty look. Um, I'm gonna use a chip brush for it. And I'm just gonna paint it on. And then I'm gonna use a lint-free cloth. So just work it in. If you have too much rust, like I said, on um, the surface of what you're doing, you can kind of pour this out into something else so that you don't contaminate your Big Mama's butter. Okay, but see how that just, it's just soaking right in. You can use Big Mama's Butter as a polish for stainless steel. You can use it to treat leather. You can use it to treat wood. Um, your leather car seats works great for that. It's just like, it's I think my favorite product. It's just got so many uses and it brings things just right back to life. Old trunks that are wood or metal or leather. Um, the, the guy Reese that I work with at Reese Trading Company, he just, he has a rag that he has Big Mama's Butter on. He doesn't ever wash it. He just keeps the Big Mama's Butter on it and ends up treating so many things in the shop and it just makes them look so much better. Okay, see how it's just transforming it? And I've got gilding wax back here and it's not wiping it off, so that's good. We'll see how it does on the stuff I just put on. Although I'm, I just put it right here and it's okay. Okay, I'll do the sides later. So I'm gonna take a lint-free cloth and I'm going to, how is the butter different from the wax? Thanks. So Shai, the, the butter has coconut oil and hemp seed oil in it in addition to carnauba wax and also is, um, antibacterial and it will keep bugs away too that the scented kind will so it's just it's so good to treat like the inside of your drawers with it smells wonderful if you get the scented there's um, a floral which is Suzanne's garden and then there's the orange scent and then um, there's an unscented but if you're worried about the orange or the other one bothering you I haven't really had anybody say that it bothers them in terms of the scent because the orange is more like a natural orange scent. So, all right. So see how amazing that looks? Does it keep pausing? Am I having issues? Okay. So hopefully my feed is going okay. So let me know. Let's go ahead and do the Big Mama's Butter on the front here okay so let's see all right I'm gonna back you up so we can see this how's my feed am I is it shaky let's see all right so I'm gonna try to put a minimal amount no pausing there okay good 
I'm going to try to put just a minimal amount and I'm going to go around the areas. I'm not, I'm going to try to not hit that too much, but look how amazing this is when I start putting it on here. So I'm not doing a crazy amount. I'm just going over the surface here. You're going to be able to see a big difference. I see the gilding wax under here. It's not wiping it off. So that's good, but I'm really not going to, well, I can put a little bit on here. Um, the good thing about Big Mama's Butter, especially if you treat like wood with it, it doesn't end up drying like super oily once it soaks in. Now this is metal, but it's kind of a rusty metal. So there is a little bit of something to soak into and it can be used as a polish. So just wipe off the excess after a while and you'll be good to go. So see how it's just enhancing everything? It's like instant facelift for this piece of furniture. So good. Okay, so see how that, how much different that side looks than the rest. Now, if you like it like this, you don't necessarily have to treat it with this, but this just, it really nourishes it and I think elevates it to look even better than it did. So personally, I like that deeper, darker color, but if you don't, you don't have to do this. So you could spray a clear coat over it if you don't do the wax, if you wanted to, or you could brush a clear coat on it too. I'm just saying spray because with the rusty, I don't know, might have a lot coming off on your brush, but. Oh, that's looking so good. I've been wanting to do this piece for a while. So see, now that we have half of it done, you can see the before and after right there of, you know, treated with Big Mama's Butter versus not, so. And the blue is staying up or staying on there. The gilding wax is staying on there. So the only thing that I will say about sealing with Big Mama's Butter is if you have a lighter colored piece, it will tend to add a little bit of yellow because look at the color of it. Um, you buff it after, yes, wait, so yeah, you can buff after. Yeah, will not get on your clothes because you buff off the excess. So, all right, I see. Yeah, as long as you buff it off, you'll be fine. It's, you know, if you leave too much on, yeah, but it won't get on your clothes if you treat the inside of your drawers because you buff it and then it dries and it dries beautifully. So you do want a porous surface to put it on. So otherwise it can just you know, sit a little bit on, on the surface, but if you have something for it to soak into, like I said, this metal, is kind of an aged piece, so it has a little bit of something to, to go into. All right, we're almost ready to step back and see how we did. It's really, I like putting it on with a chip brush because it just makes quick work out of it. So, putting it on here. very fast and it just smells so good. If you treat the inside of your drawers, you open them up and they smell wonderful. And if you're selling furniture, it's a good way to make your furniture stand out. Okay, there we go. How's that? Look how cool that looks now compared to how it looked when we started out. I think it's pretty good. So anyway, anybody have any questions for me? Let's see, love how it turned out. I love how it's turning out too. Pretty good, I'll do the back of it. Thank you guys for the hearts. And I'll post pictures of it 
I'll kind of set some cool things next to it, post some pictures. So anyway, um, yeah, if you have metal, you want to treat it with some Big Mama's Butter, get some Big Mama's Butter. It's good stuff. You can treat like everything with it. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you guys for the hearts. Um, again, my name's Angie. I'm with Be Painted Feather by Angie. I'm located in Sebastopol, California, and can use gilding wax on wire baskets. Absolutely. Works great on any kind of metal. So um, go to my page, The Painted Feather by Angie, and like and follow my page. And um, oh, Cindy's near Sacramento. Good. And if you need Dixie Bell paint, you can go to um, DixieBellPaint.com and you can click on the affiliate link that is in the description of this video and get it delivered right to you or find a retailer in your area and um, get it ordered up and do some projects. It's super fun. It's a good relaxing thing to do. And then you have something cool to show for your time, right? So anyway, thanks for watching. I am here every Monday night. I'll be back next Monday. Um, send me suggestions of what you want to see if you have any. And let's do this again next week. All right. Have a great night, everyone. We'll see you soon. Thank you, Dixie Bell.